video is part two of my ionic bonds. Now having ionic bonds that are including your transition metals and polyatomic ions. So let's start by talking about transition metals. Those are your D block of your periodic table. And these metals will always make cations because metals want to lose their valence electrons. They become positively charged. So all my transition metals, like I said, have D orbitals with electrons in them. So they can pull these electrons from that d orbital so they can give away various amounts of electrons. So because they can give away anywhere from one to six electrons, I need some way of knowing how many electrons it's giving away, depending on what it's being paired with. So to keep track of these numbers, we use oxidation numbers, and that's just the charge that's shown. So you've already seen them before. It's when you have potassium plus one, calcium plus two. That plus one and plus two are their oxidation numbers. Same as having fluorine minus one and nitrogen minus three. Those again, those negative three and negative one charges is this oxidation number. It tells you if it's gaining or losing electrons. So these oxidation numbers indicate how many electrons they will either donate or receive. But us talking about transition metals, they're just donating these electrons. So when the name is written, we have to be able to be told how many electrons are lost. And to do that, we use Roman numerals. So my Roman numerals, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the V, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You should be familiar with these because you'll be having to use them. So let's put this into practice. So here I have Fe2O3. I have a metal and a nonmetal ionic bond. I go ahead and I draw my, my subscripts back up to figure out what are my charges that I have. By doing that, opposite of what we did before, I find that I have iron plus 3 and oxygen minus 2. Now when I go to write the name, I need to tell my audience, hey, I have iron plus 3. Not iron plus 2, not iron plus 1, but plus 3. So I write it as iron 3 in parentheses oxide. And I read it as iron 3 oxide. So then I have my next one, FeO. Well, right now they're Fe1O1. And I crisscross them back up and I get iron plus 1 and oxygen minus 1. Well, I know oxygen is in group 6. It has to be minus 2. So that means since they show that they're an equal ratio of one to the other, I really have to have iron plus 2 to have oxygen minus 2 in this 1 to 1 ratio. So there again, I then tell my audience I have iron 2 oxide. So go ahead now and try the following, writing COCl2 and ZNBr, crisscrossing up their subscripts to determine their charge, and then writing my metal, my Roman numeral, and then my anion. You should have got cobalt 2 chloride and zinc 1 bromide. Well, what if I want to go the opposite way? Well, I just go in reverse order. Here I have copper 2 oxide. This 2 here tells me what my charge is of my copper. So I write copper. Cu, and it's plus 2 because my Roman numeral 2 tells me that I have a plus 2 charge. Then I have my oxide. Well, oxide, my ox stem there tells me that I have oxygen, and oxygen is minus 2. So I crisscross my charges down, and I get Cu2O2. Now they're both the same, so I can reduce to have CuO. Go on to number two, copper one oxide. Copper one tells me I have copper plus one. Oxide again tells me I have oxygen minus two. I crisscross my values down. I get Cu2O. Again, now reduced. Go ahead now and try chromium four nitride, silver one sulfide. Knowing my Roman numerals tell me my charges, and I just need to determine what anions I have. You should have got CR3N4 
an AG2S. So besides a regular nonmetal, transition metals, I can also have polyatomic ions. Now polyatomic, the name tells you what it is. Poly means multiple, atomic is atom, and ion means this is a charged ion. These polyatomic ions stay as a unit, and because of that we have to use parentheses around my polyatomic ion if I have more than one. So then I put my number that I have underneath. On the back of your reference guide, you have a list of all the different polyatomic ions that they can use on your final exam. We'll go over that in more detail in class. With my polyatomic ions, if you can take out your reference guide and look at the list you have or turn to the list that's in your book, there's a distinct pattern with adding oxygen to my polyatomic ion. Typically, a polyatomic ion is a metal or nonmetal, usually nonmetals, that also have another oxygen attached to them, although that's not always the case. When this happens, we can have a range of, like for example, ClO4 minus, again here's my multiple atoms with my charge to make it polyatomic. I have ClO3 minus, ClO2 minus, and ClO1. The Cl is my chlorine, O's are my oxygens. ClO4 is named perchlorate, ClO3 is chlorate, ClO2 minus is chlorite, and ClO minus is hypochlorite. Notice that I have different endings, some have different beginnings, they all have the same stem of chlor for my chlorines, which are all the same here. The only thing that changes is my number of oxygens, my charge also stays the same. So like I said, a polyatomic ion is a unit. My ClO4 really looks like this. I have a chlorine with four oxygens attached. One chlorine, four oxygens, negative charge, and we'll learn how to draw these later on in this unit. But here's my chlorine with my four oxygens attached with my negative charge versus my chlorite, which is ClO2, one chlorine, two oxygens, all has a negative charge. Now this negative charge can now attach to a positively charged metal ion, which would be your cation. One way to remember the endings of these, I have perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite, is my eights, I'm going to have more oxygens on my eight because you ate more oxygens because you were hungry. Eights have more. Whereas eights are on the lesser end. So different uh, polyatomic ions can follow the same pattern. There is one positive polyatomic ion that you're responsible for, and that's ammonium. It's NH4. Also, another one to notice is you have acetate. This one can be written in two different ways. You have CH, or C2H3O2 minus, or you can write as CH3COO minus. My preference is this way. It's just a couple less letters you need to write. And like I said, if you have more than one polyatomic ion that you need because you have to balance it out because of the charge on your metal, you just need to use parentheses around it. And we'll go through a couple examples next. Okay, some examples. Example one, I have K2SO3. So first I look, I have my metal, K2, and that's just potassium. SO3, I have here, this is my sulfite ion. So I just write potassium sulfite. I don't have to change the name of my polyatomic ion at all. Next, here is an example of having parentheses because I have more than one polyatomic. I have my iron here, so I write that first, iron. Now, iron is a transition metal, so I need to indicate what its charge was. Well, I notice here I have IO3. 
If you go on your list, your reference guide, and find IO3, you'll notice that that's iodate. So, iodate has a negative 1 charge, which is why I have 1 iron here. My iron had to have a positive 3 charge. So I have to write iron 3, and then I write my polyatomic ion, which is iodate. Go ahead now and try the following. NH42S, name that one. Then name MgCN2 and COOH3. Again, notice that there's parentheses around my polyatomic ions. You should have got ammonium sulfide, magnesium cyanide, and cobalt 2 hydroxide. OH is hydroxide. Let's go ahead and go the other direction. Sodium carbonate. Sodium is my atom, sodium. So I write Na. And I know that sodium has a positive 1 charge because it's in group 1. Then I go ahead and locate carbonate on my polyatomic ion sheet. Carbonate is CO3 minus 2. So next I go ahead and I crisscross my charges. And I write Na2CO3. And I just have one carbonate because of my positive one charge of my sodium. Next example, I have calcium acetate. Calcium, Ca, it's in group 2, so it's going to have a positive 2 charge. And then I have acetate. This is the one where I told you there's two options. I like to write it C2H3O2. It has a negative one charge. Now, I crisscross my charges. And notice that I have to use parentheses around my acetate, so that way I can determine that I have two acetates. So I write CA parentheses C2H3O2. And then I have two acetates. Notice that if I didn't have my parentheses, it would say c 2 h 3 O22. And I do not have 22 oxygens. I really have two acetates. Next I have aluminum sulfite. Aluminum, I find on my periodic table, AL, and it's in group 3, so it has a positive 3 charge. And then I have sulfite. Sulfite is SO3. And it has a negative 2 charge. I go ahead and crisscross them down. And I get Al2 parentheses SO3. I get my parentheses saying I have three sulfite ions attached to my two aluminums. Go ahead now and try writing for beryllium sulfate magnesium chlorite, and strontium dichromate. You should get the following answers.